No complaints. Uh. No complaints. Good. Let's start. Let's get this thing going. We open my screen so long. On the work we've done of the calculation of the water quantities. Any questions? And that would be the last time. concrete, there's only no stone in it, shrinkage is exactly the same as concrete. Uh, then on our mortar calculations itself, we spoke about the, um, half brick wall, we spoke about the one brick wall, we spoke about uh, uh, the one and a half brick wall with two mortar slitters inside. Then when we look at mass brickwork, how we calculate the mortar in for mass brickwork, <coughs> switch off your phone, switch off your mic, we're going to open mic here, we hear all your background sounds, we're hearing all your background sounds. I'll use 0.017 cubic meters of mortar. 
If I take my my one meter divided by one uh, twenty to one ten plus a ten, I get eight point three skins of it in it, and therefore I will get eight point three sl slitters in it as well. <coughs> and then I get my mortar uh, volume for a cube of brickwork as point two to eight cubic meters per cubic meter. Yeah, of mortar per cubic meter of brickwork. Must I run through that one quickly before you? Right, let just, I must just bear with me for two seconds. I must just move my laptop now and switch on my other okay. video. Yeah. So let's just move my laptop here quickly. Right, now you should be seeing my hand again. Can you see my hand? A piece of paper. Talk to me, can you hear me? Are you there? Yes, I have a touch of your move. Right, you see my hand, my paper? Yes, we yes sir. Right. Let's just get to that example quickly in my book here, because now my notes is now taken away. Let me grab a book here quickly. There's that example in my book, so let's talk on the same figures than you. And I say a thousand millimeters, and how is my thousand millimeters made up? I'm basically slicing up this cube of mine into uh, half brick skins. So that's why I'm using one ten plus ten millimeter. So that will give me eight point three skins. For each half brick skin, what's my mortar consumption? 
0.017 cubic meter per meter square. You agree with that? And now are you there? You agreeing with me, you disagreeing with me. Agree. Agree is a good. So therefore, let me say 8.3 skins times 0 0.017 cubic meter per meter square gives me 0 0.145 cubic meters. But now I've done my mortar in between my bricks, but I'm now still going to do my mortar where my skins are actually glued together. So therefore I'm saying 8.3 times 1 meter by 1 meter by 10 millimeters thick. And that will give me another 0. 0.083 cubic meters. Okay. So therefore, my motor consumption out it will be 0 0.228 cubic meters per cubic meter of uh, of brickwork. So I basically take my cube of brickwork and I go and cut my cube into half brick skins and then I go and calculate so I will go and do and cut my cube of brickwork here in little skins like this I go and cut it in skins like this and each one there is 110 110 millimeter so if I take my one meter my, my half brick skin is 110 wide and I add my 10 millimeter for my joint in between I'll have 8.3 skins. I use 0.017 cubic meters uh, per square meter. So therefore, 8.3 times 0.17 cubic meters per square meter, 145 cubic meters. <coughs> now I must still add my skins in between. So it's 8.3. Yes. No, it's a, it is 0 0.017 uh, constant or. It's a constant for a standard wow. size of brick. So okay. if, if I tell you we're doing brick work, and I don't tell you the size of the brick, then you assume a brick is 220 by 110 by 75. And the figures that we've done here in the calculation will be a constant for that size of brick. If I change my brick size, then these figures will also change. So, because very often, these days, maxi bricks are becoming very much the norm, and your maxi bricks differ considerably from supplier to supplier. They actually differ. So, yes, you must count it, but this point 0.017 is a constant for a standard imperial brick, an old-fashioned brick, as you call it. Right, is that answering your question? <coughs> Yes, sir. Yes. Good. Any other questions here? Sir. A question or no? Telling me you're happy. I'm good. Right. I'm good. good. Right. So now let, let's the fun and games continue. Now. We've dealt with our material. We know now how to calculate the number of bricks. We know how to calculate the, the cost of the mortar. And we know now how to calculate the actual um, quantity of mortar that we're going to need. So <coughs> we've dealt with our material side. Now I'm here on page 105. And now we must start looking at our labor constant for now, the first thing, in brickwork, 
we work, we, we, we have an artisan and we have a general laborer, assistant, a laborer, whatever you want to call the person. And this person is handing him bricks, handing him mortar, handing him cavity ties, handing him uh, brick force, assisting him with his scaffolding. So that person is assisting him. But in this relationship, who's actually responsible? for the production. Is the bricklayer responsible for it or is the laborer responsible for the production? The mason. The mason. The mason, the bricklayer is responsible for production. And that's important. So now, for our purposes here in the notes, we assume this per day as an average production. Now, we all know production varies on various factors, the weather conditions, the difficulty of the work, the availability of material, and, and, and. But for our purposes, we assume 640 bricks, stock bricks per day as the average production. If I don't give you any information on the calculation of a brick labor rate, then you use that 640 bricks as the basis of your calculation. Alternatively, I will give you information where I tell you a team of five masons and eight laborers produce that many bricks in that many hours or that many days. And then from that information, you go and calculate your new production figures. <clears throat> but now, we still have got one problem in this because the masons. We measure the output in number of bricks. But how do you measure brickwork in your bill of quantities? Or how do we measure brick brickwork in general? We measure brickwork in square meters. So that means we must go and convert the, the mason's output to actual square meters. And the number of bricks varies between the type of wall. If we look at the half brick wall, it's 52 bricks on standard imperial bricks. If you look at the one brick wall, it's 104 bricks. It's double. So, therefore, when we calculate our brick production, we go back to our old trusted formula, total time over total production. <coughs> now, our total time in this case, we only take the time of, for the production. So my mansion gave eight hours of his time. That's my total time. What is my mason's production during that for that day? He did 640 bricks. And how many bricks have we got to a square meter for a half brick wall? 52 bricks. So that means my labor constant is 0.65 hours per square meter. That will be my labor constant. <coughs> get, you, get your heads around what we're actually saying. The total time is always the time of your artisan, your mason. In this case, I gave you his production as 640 bricks. But we want a labor constant for, for a half brick wall. So therefore we take 640 bricks, we divide by 52 bricks, being his number of bricks to a square meter. So therefore his labor constant is 0.65 hours per, per square meter. Happiness on this. Yeah. Just come again, I can't hear you. Said yes, sir. Um, yes, uh, good. That's good. So now let's go to exercise one. Um, okay. Now the fun can start. So here if we go to exercise one, 
And we're starting off with number B. I'm first going to go around the actual, uh, I'm not going to do the precondition because that's going to confuse you again. So I'm starting off there on uh, calculate the labor constant for the following brick walls. Now for a one brick wall. So again, total time, total production. So what's my total time? Eight hours. What's my total production? 640 bricks. And how many bricks have I got in one square meter of an one brick wall? How many bricks have I got? 104. 104. All right. I'm then going to divide this by 104. And then this will give me, let me get to the full order here, 8 divided by 640 divided by 104. Hello, you did. What went wrong there? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I'm there. What went wrong here? We all went offline. I don't know what went wrong there. Who is listening to you? Who's listening to me? I'm saying people are probably just waiting for you. So I don't know. Are they waiting for me? <laughs> I don't know what went wrong here. <clears throat> And, sorry? 1.3. It's 1.3 hours, it's 1.3 hours. We just get, can you see, my screen sharing is now off, I see. You can't see that, we go back. See why this thing's... Let's go back there quickly. Share screen again. There we go. And that will give us 1.3 hours per meter square. Right. Have we got general happiness on question B? Yes, sir. So now let's look at number C. That's a cavity wall. Same production figure. And we're looking at the cavity wall. Ah, if you look at the background here, you should uh, 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 still recognize these drawings. You still remember this from your first year? Look at a page I've got. Uh, I'm really working here on my drawing board. And I did some drawings with the first years. But right, let's look at number <coughs> C. The cavity wall. Again, go back to old faithful. Total time, total production. What's my total time? Eight hours. What's my total production? 640 bricks. Five bricks. Divided by how many bricks have I got in a square meter on a cavity wall? I use standard imperial bricks. 104. 104. 104. 104 bricks. And what will that give me? In three. Sorry? 1.3 hours. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Um, when, cal when calculating a, a cavity wall or a PPF, would you, would you include the inflation as an extra over? Would you, in would, it, would you separate okay. it? Or? I just, come, just come again there, you broke, broke up. What about the interior? I am saying, like, when, you, when, when you're calculating either a PPF or a, a cavity wall, the, the concrete infill, would you separate it? Yeah. 
That's the second half. Yeah, if you've got a cavity wall, fold from the concrete like a tiny wall, then that, that, that becomes a separate item, yes. The concrete is measured separately. And the concrete is measured separately. Okay, thank you, sir. All right. Now let's look at uh, one and a half brick wall. C number T is a one and a half brick wall. So we're going to trust it again, total time, total production. But now how do we go further? Total time, eight hours. Total production, 640 bricks. But how many bricks to a square meter in a one and a half brick wall? Small mistakes. That was killing you in price. One five six. Yes. So what will be our labor constant for one and a half brick wall? general happiness on this. So. <coughs> right. Now we're going to look here at exercise number two. There are other ones you can go and do, work through them yourself. to have to be to the general principle. So now we look at this example we've got here. And we're saying Exercise two. Right. What information have you got? Two brick layers. Lay 1,275 bricks in one eight-hour day, building a one brick wall. Calculate the labor constant for this item of work. So where do we start now? Eight hours over one Total. Total time, total production. Now, you were right with your eight hours. Eight hours. But how many people gave eight hours? We have two. Oh, We've got yes, two people. Okay, yes, sir. Two people gave eight hours. Right? And what was the total production? One, two, seven, five. One, two, seven, five. And what are we busy building? A one brick wall. So it's divided by 104 bricks. So my total time is 16 hours and but they did on that one two seven five bricks and we busy with a one brick wall so it's one of four bricks to a square meter and what will that make my labor constant 1.3 1 1.31 1 rounding off 1.31 hours per meter square. <coughs> right, you just wait for the rest of the class to catch up to us. Have we got happiness on this? Yes, sir. Okay, and the other people? 
and just wait for other people to, to get because if you miss this step you're going to battle with brickwork for a long time because the next step after this is we actually start putting all this components together into one exercise and then we're actually busy, busy doing a precasting. <coughs> so we'll be here for the rest of the class. Are you happy with what, with what we're doing so far? Are you with us? Yes, sir. Yes, you're with us. Yeah. Yeah, well, good. Then we're getting to exercise number B. And what do we do in exercise number B? Ten bricklayers assisted by fifteen laborers laid thirty two thousand bricks in one week thirty two thousand bricks in one week building a one and a half brick wall. Calculate the labor constant for this item of work. But where do we start? Old faithful total time total production. What was the total time? On this project, one week. Right. So one week equals five days. You agree with that? Five days. And how long is one working day? Eight hours. Eight hours. And how many people gave eight hours each? All right, but now what are we going to use? Must we going to use 25 or 10 or 15? What are we going to use here? 10. 10. 10, because who's responsible for your production? Your bricklayers. Um, so, so it's 10 bricklayers. And what is, what do they do? What's the total production? They did 32,000 bricks. And what are we busy building? We're busy building a one and a half brick wall. So how many bricks have we got in a one and a half brick wall? 52 times three, give me one, five, six bricks. Is one and a half brick wall here. Yeah. Yeah, one and a half brick wall. One, five, six bricks. You happy with that? And what will that give me as a labor constant? 19.5. Oh, 1.95, not 19. 1.95. 1. 1.95 hours. Square meter. Let Punch the figures here with me to check if I'm right. Five times eight times ten gives me equals hundred. One point nine five hours. I tend to concur with you. Yeah. Now, importantly, and I've heard it a couple of times this morning already, in pricing, you must be very precise. Like, you might, you, you, you might have the right answer, but you write down 19.5 instead of 1.95. You say a one and a half brick wall has got 154 bricks or 152 bricks. It must be 156 bricks. Very often in pricing, it's the small mistakes that actually cause you to have bad marks. You know how to, how to resolve the, 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 the calculation, but people make careless mistakes, and that actually affects them badly. They actually get stuff wrong that they're quite capable of doing. <coughs> 
but they actually get it wrong because of careless mistakes. So you must learn accuracy. At the beginning, get into the habit of actually doing a calculation twice to, to check your figures. If you, if you punch the figures correctly into your calculator until you're getting more into it. Also, a good thing with pricing, when you're doing pricing, especially at the beginning, you must you must sound like a crazy person. That means talk to yourself. You'll hear I'm, I'm saying total time, who gave how many hours, how many hours in a day. Actually, in your head, just tell yourself what you're actually busy doing. When you tell yourself what you're busy doing, the, the, the calculation starts to making sense. It was the biggest danger that you can do in pricing. You can try and learn a calculation like this off your heart like a parrot. But what's going to happen in a, in a test or an exam or, a, or this? It's not going to be five days. They're not going to work eight hours. They're not going to be ten masons. They're not going to lay 32,000 bricks. It's not going to be a one and a half brick wall. So, if you understand the principle behind this, what we're doing, I can go and put in any data in there, and you'll be able to do it. If you learn this like a parrot, and I change one of my my uh, my areas of data, what's going to happen? You're going to be lost. So that's why it's important that you actually understand what we're doing, and don't learn it like a parrot. You must understand what we're doing, why we're doing it. And what data, where do we get the data from that you're actually using in that calculation that we're actually busy with? And that's the important part. Right. You happy on this part? Can I go yes, to, yes, can we go to my other screen here quickly? It's my other one now. Let me check that out. There we go. Right. You can see your, your notes now again. Yes, sir. Yes, right. So here's the, the output, the production figures. We did this already. Uh, skip the brick on edge. Some exercises. And again, I'm not... I'm going to skip the brick on edge one first, but uh, with the, with the mortar mix is going to be constant throughout. So let's look at the mortar mixing here. We more, our mortar mixing is one is to six, so that means it's seven parts. Under a dry, 28% shrinkage will give me a 72 weight. So that means 1.39 dry equals one wet. Exactly the same as we did when we did our uh, our concrete calculations. So cement is one out of seven. 1.39 times 1.39 for our shrinkage, and the 50.3. Do you still remember what the 50.3 means? Why is the 50.3 there? What does this 50.3 mean there? I've got there next to my cursor. Was the break that long? So can you please remind us? Remind you? Oh! <laughs> it's, it's number number of cement number bags. Number of bags. Number of bags, cement bags per cube. Yes. That's number of bags per cube. Then our sand... Six out of the seven parts is our sand. 1.39 is our bulking or shrinkage factor, but even recall it. And the handling of cement is exactly the same. 6.02 bags, 10% of a laborer's hourly rate. And in this case, a laborer earns 27 and 50 cents per hour. Then mixing is by hand. Our labor constant for that is uh, is eight hours at 27 and 50. That's 220 rand. That's 979 rand. I add my mixing waste to it, and again, we take our mixing waste at, at the end, because if the mortar gets wasted in the process, the labor the mix gets wasted as well. And therefore, my cost to my mortar is 1,028 rand and 87 cents, based on my given information. Can I assume there's happiness with that calculation? <coughs> I 
and I assume we've got a happiness on that calculation. That didn't apply. You must tell me why, why there's, there's no happiness on that calculation. Why well, we've got happiness on that calculation there. Who's talking to me? And I go on to, on to the next part of the calculation. Right. So now here's the precon edge one. I'm skipping that one first. And we're going to an half brick wall. Calculation, as we did, I just did it. Now I'm going to my bricks. And I'm using 52 bricks to a square meter because it's standard imperial bricks. No, no other information given. Importantly, look how my rate is given in your example here. I measure it per thousand bricks. So therefore, I use 0.052 of a thousand bricks, and I give my rate as 1,920 rand. I could have made my rate each, my quantity 52. And my rate, one rand 92 cents per brick as well. It's going to make absolutely no difference to my final answer. I prefer to work with the actual number for each 52 bricks and one rand 92 per brick. That's what I prefer to work with. So my bricks is going to cost me 99 rand and 84 cents. I add my waste at 2.5%. Then I take my mortar. What's my mortar constant for a, a half brick wall in standard imperial bricks? 0.017 cubic meter. My mortar rate is 106.814 as calculated before. That's 18 rand 16 cents. Now I take a bit further application waste. Right. This is as the mason takes the mortar, some of the mortar falls on the ground. So that waste occurred in the application process. So when we, when we have mortar and concrete for that matter, we have mixing waste. That waste occurs in the mixing process. And then we have application waste, where they actually apply the mortar. Right, have I got happiness on my calculation? This Now, brick force is measured separately in terms of the standard system. So therefore, we make no provision for brick force. The only exception is cavity ties. Cavity ties is included with your description, but we only have cavity ties in the 270 cavity wall. We only have cavity ties. In a half brick or a one brick wall, we've got no cavity ties. And like I said, for the, the, the brick force is a separate measured item as per the standard system. Have I got happiness here on my materials? Who's talking to me? Yes, sir. No. Good. Are you happy with that? Talk to me. I just hear background noises. Are you happy with the, the material calculation so far? What? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. So then you come now. We come to the labor part. Now, when we're doing brick work, just switch off. Who's gonna open mic there? Just switch off your mic. Now, on the brick work side, on the, on the labor side. In general, we work with a constant of one artisan and 1.5 laborers assisting that artisan. 
So now the first thing that people ask me, where do we get 1.5 laborers? Are we going to employ a very lazy person or a uh, disabled person? How, how, do we, how are we actually going to get to 1.5 laborers? Any suggestion? Any suggestion on how, how are we going to get to this 1.5 laborers that we're talking about here? We're going to employ one productive laborer and one very lazy laborer or, uh, or unproductive laborer. How are we going to get to this 1.5? Uh, Sir, so I, think, I think it would be based on uh, the allocation of uh, hours. Uh, no. Just allocate. Uh, no. You're slightly off. You're on the right track, but you're slightly off. Um, don't, don't, don't labor labor. Labor. Want the labor is split the brick layers. Yeah, well, there we go. There we go. For brick for brick work, to do brick work, it is not an individual task. If you've got your, uh, your masons on a site, your masons work in a team. You normally have, depending on how big the thing is you build, three masons, five masons, eight masons in, in a team. And then they all build on the wall, and they all, each one builds his section of the wall, and when they get to, 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 to the that course is finished, they move the line up, and then they go on to the next course. So that means, let's take for calculation purposes, if I have two masons working together in a team, then I'll have, I'll have three laborers actually assisting them. And that is where I get my one and a half laborers from. In our calculation, I will tell you that we've got eight masons assisted by 12 laborers. Now, if I've got eight masons assisted by 12 laborers, how many? Laborers have I got for each mason? I've got eight masons that's being assisted by 12 laborers. How many, how many laborers have I got per mason? Can help up with the answer. 1.5. It's exactly the same. Do you concur on on that answer? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Now, if I have seven, uh, if I have five masons and seven laborers, what's my ratio of uh, masons to artisans? I mean. Uh, of ambassadors to laborers. 1.4. Right. That's the principle. You're all happy on that principle. Yes, sir. Right. Then one artisan can do, and here they're showing us the alternative method of the calculation now in the notes. We're busy building a half brick skin, so that means we're using 52 bricks per square meter. And the 80 they're showing us there is if you take the 640 production and divide it by 8 hours, that means the artisan is doing 80 bricks in an hour. So that 52, make a note on yours, where's the 52 coming from? That's the number of bricks in a square meter. The 80 refers to the production, 640, divided by 8 hours. So that's giving me 80 bricks per hour. And then from that, I calculate my labor cost. That's 0 0.065 hours per square meter. Have you got happiness on that? 
Can you please repeat? Yeah. Right. The 52 relates to the number of bricks to a square meter. Because we've got 52 bricks in a square meter of a half brick wall. Uh, 80 relates to the 600, the, the, my production is 640 bricks per an 8 hour day. So 640 divided by 8 gives me 80 bricks per hour. So my mason can do 80 bricks in one hour. How many bricks uh, do we require him to lay in one square meter of our half brick wall? We require 52 bricks. So therefore, 52 out of 80 gives me 0.65 hours to lay one square meter of half brick wall. And you must lay this out for you in a logical sense, like I'm talking to you now, to actually understand what you're doing. If you try and learn this like a parrot, you're going to be dead in the water before you start it. Because imagine, this is our first calculation. So if the first calculation looks like this, what's going to happen to your more advanced calculations? They're going to get considerably more involved. And if you try and learn it like a parrot, you're going to be lost. You must understand step by step what we're actually doing and actually take yourself through the different steps. Why are we doing it? What are we busy calculating? Where do we get our data from for our calculation? Right. So I have got happiness on my 0.65 hours where that's coming from. Yes, sir. Right. Then, my rate for my answer is 52 rand an hour. That's given to you in the, in the, in the preambles of the, of the notes. So, therefore, it's costing me 53 rand and 80 cents for my artist hours that he was working to, to lay that one square meter of brick wall. Then, I've got 1.5 laborers assisting him. So if the artisan is there 1.65 hours, I've got 1.5 laborers also there for 0.65 hours. So my total laborers labor comes in at 1.5 times 1.65 in 0.98 hours. So for every 0.65 hours my uh, mason spends there doing a square meter of brickwork, I must pay one and a half laborers and their total labor hours comes in at 0.98 hours is their total labor hours. Now just work through that and get your heads nicely around it where we're getting those figures from. Right, can we move on? Can I move on? Yes, sir. Yes, right. So therefore, a labor, a general labor earns uh, 27 rand 50 cents an hour. So my one and a half laborers will cost me 7 rand and 84 cents. I get a subtotal of my labor and material of 165 rand. I add my 15% overheads, I get to a gross rate. I add my profit of 10% and I get to a rate of per square meter for my brickwork of 205 rand and 67 cents. As we did before. Right, any questions on... Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, how realistic is this uh, compared to industry? Uh, it's, it's, it's fairly. The going right now for a half brick wall is about 250, uh, 250 rand a square meter is the going rate at the moment. Okay. 
this is fairly uh, this is fairly real, fairly realistic that we are seeing here. Yeah. Yeah. Fairly, fairly, fairly realistic. Thank you, sir. Right. Happiness with this. Now, if you all have, yes. Yes, who's asking me here? Uh, who's asking a question and he got lost? Right. Okay, can't hear you. So now let's go to the exercise here on page. Where's your exercises? Where's your brief with exercises? See, <coughs> I haven't loaded your brickwork exercises for you yet, I see. Yeah. Mm. Alright, there's an exercise on the page 10... There's an exercise here on page 10... It will be exercise 2 on page 121. I will forward that to you. Actually, I didn't load that. I can load here. Yeah. I will load up that exercise for you on Moodle to practice, for you to practice yourself as well. Let me go through it when I see you again. But for time being, Work through that exercise that we've done already. Can you, can you uh, see your notes again now? Yes, we can. Yes, all right. This thing, uh, this thing is temperamental. Sometimes you can jump around like this, no problem. And other times then you must, must reshare all the time. Right, so you go through this exercise we've done here and our labor constants to actually get your head around that. I will upload your other exercise this afternoon, some stage I'll, I'll upload that for you. Any questions that we've done on the work so far this morning? <coughs> right, if there's no comment. I assume you understand the section we did, and so last chance for questions. Third and final time. I assume there's no questions. Um, sir? Yes. Um, can I go through the motor analysis again? Oh, I can't hear. Yeah. Can I go through the motor analysis again? The motor for which one? The, the mixing of the motor or the calculation of the motor quantity? No, the mixing, not the... The actual mixing. You're talking about this one here, you see here? Yes, that one. All right. Where are you having... Just for, go through it in, in general. Yes, sir, please. All right. Let's run through this thing again. The motor works exactly the same as what uh, concrete worked. The only difference is we haven't got stone in the mix and our mixing... Mixing uh, a labor cost for mixing is slightly less. To mix a uh, mortar is easier than to mix concrete if you mix it by hand. So for our mortar, based on the information, we've got 25%. Shrinkage, 5%. Mixing waste, 2.5%. Application waste. Our mix is 1 into 5. So that means it's got 6 parts to it. Uh, 100 dry, minus a 25% shrinkage. Use, uh, equals a 75 wet, 100 divided by 75 dry gives me one wet, so I need 1.33 dry materials to give me one wet material for my shrinkage. Are you happy up to that point? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I'm happy right. Yeah. All right, so now we get to our actual mixing, uh, my cement. Is one of the out of six parts is my cement. 1.33 is my shrinkage factor I'm making provision for, and the 50.3 is my number of bags uh, in a cubic meter of mortar. 
So that will give me 6.72 bags of cement. My cement is costing me 78 rand a bag, so it's 523 rand for my cement. Yeah. Happy on the cement calculation? Yes, sir. Right. Then to my sand. Five out of six parts is my sand. My shrinkage factor is 1.33. Therefore, I need 1.11 cubic meters of sand. My sand is costing me 250 rand per cube as my earlier given information. So, therefore, my, my sand for this mix of mortar will cost me 254 rand and 92 cents. You happy on your sand calculation? Yes, sir. Good. Let me look at handling of cement. We've got 6.72 bags of cement. And the handling of cement is 10% of a laborer's hourly rate. Here our laborer earns 27 rand 50 cents, so it's 2 rand 75. So the handling of my cement is 18.47, exactly the same as we had for our uh, concrete mixing as well. Happy on that part? Um, yes, sir. All right. Then the labor part for mixing. My labor constant is 8 hours. This was as given earlier on for our constant. That's your labor constant for mixing water per hand. In our examples here, a general laborer earns 27 rand and 50 cents. So if he, if he takes 8 hours to mix it, that's going to cost me 220 rand to mix that cube of, uh, of mortar. So that means if I take all my materials and I add my labor to it, this adds up to 1,017 rand in total for my material. Then I must add my mixing waste. And as it is concrete, if it gets wasted, then my machine time gets wasted, my labor gets wasted, my material gets wasted. So we take wastage on all the components. So we take wastage at the end. So in this case, we've got 5% wastage, it's 50 rand and 86, 86 cents. And then we get to a net cost of my mortar mix of 1,068 rand and 14 cents. We don't take overhead and profit on it at this stage because we're going to use that rate again in our calculation. And then we're going to add overhead and profit to it. Otherwise, we've got double profit on, on, the, on the, our cost because we're going to price this ourselves out of the job. Right. Happiness on that calculation. Yes, sir. Thank you. Right. Not stuck anymore. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, good. Any other questions? Sir, can you also please go um, through bricklaying, especially the labor part? The labor part here at bricklaying. Here where my cursor is here. Yeah. Can you see my cursor? There. Yes, sir. On that section there. Do you mean no? Yes, sir. All right. Now, I work to, if no other information is given, we work to one bricklayer gets assisted by one and a half laborers to assist him. You already spoke about it. This one and a half comes out of a ratio. For instance, I'll have two masons and, uh, and three laborers, or I can have whatever number of ratio that will give my ratio that on the given information. On our information at the moment, we work on 1.5 if nothing else is given. So I've got one artisan, and in one square meter of my brickwork, for a half brick wall, I've got 52 imperial bricks. You happy with that? Correct. Correct, right. My artisan can do 640 bricks in an eight hour day. Therefore, he can do 80 bricks in one hour. So I want to find these hours. So we need 52 bricks from him and he can do 80 in an hour. So we're going to use, he could be there for 0.65 hours to finish that one square meter of half brick wall. The 80 comes from the 640. Is our given production for this example? Divided by 8 hours. That is day. And so therefore, that's where the 80 bricks per hour comes from. Happiness with that? Correct. Right. So therefore, 
My artisan is going to take 0.65 hours. My artisan earns 52 rand an hour based on our given information. So that means my artisan will cost me 53 rand and 80 cents. I've got 1.5 laborers assisting him based on my constant. So therefore I take my 1.5 laborers assisting and my artisan will be there for 0.65 hours. So therefore my labor hours will be 0.98 because I've got one and a half people that I must pay for to assist my, uh, my bricklayer. So my labor hours will be, one, will be 0.98 based on the 1.5 laborers and the time that the artisan actually is there. It's 0.98 hours, but a general laborer earns 27 rand 50, percent, 27 rand 50 cents per hour. So my one and a half laborers will cost me 7 rand and 84 cents. So, yes. So your artisan will, will cost you uh, 33.80 to, to build a 52 pre -quarter. Anyway, a one, a one meter brick wall, basically. Yes, a one square meter of half brick wall. It'll, it'll cost you 50, 50, 50 four and a round, round, round figures. Yes. Okay. But remember, that 54 rand relates to his rate of pay and his production. If either of them change, the cost is going to change. Okay. All right. You happy with that? Right. Yes, sir. Any additional questions? Did, did I answer the, the first question that, that that we had on the actual uh, on the on the actual uh, calculation of the labor? Did I answer your question? Yes. Yes. Happiness. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. In in the case whereby you're building maybe a very in the capital one, and you require only one mason, yeah. would you still allocate one and a half, or would you just go for two two laborers for that piece? That, uh, that depends on the situation. Uh, if, it, if, it, if it's that small, there must probably not be enough space to, to get uh, two people in there. If it's going to be that small. It depends on the situation you're busy dealing with on the ground. But if it's a very small space, then, then there will, won't be space to get the two people in there. So you will probably will be forced to, forced to, to use one. Okay, sir. But also what I've done often on my larger sites, when the, to, to bring down my number of laborers to, to, with my masons and actually bring up a production. When I set up my scaffolding, I will actually design my scaffolding strong enough to actually place pallets of bricks in the scaffold close to where they actually require to use it, or I'll place the pallets of bricks through a window opening inside the building. That's where I actually, it's we're building on the second of, of so the second floor or third floor. I'll actually place them inside the building or, or, uh, or in the scaffold, depending on, on, on what I've got going. And also, I'll make use of large mortar bins that I actually lift up and place in the scaffolding to save on on the, 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 the actual labor. And it, but the, the big thing is it actually helps production of your masons. Because now you, you actually brought your material much closer to the mason. And that means there's less waiting and effort to actually get the material where the masons require it. But you must do your site setup to handle material like that when you start. So, but, but then on a typical site, I actually work with slightly under one laborer to, uh, per mason. Because I've, I've put other things in place to actually uh, lift my productivity and actually make the life easier. But now I've allocated additional people on to actually get the bricks and stuff in place before the mason start. And then the distribution is mainly um, horizontal. And there's uh, no more lifting of mortar and uh, bricks, so it's making life easier for them. 
So there's lots of different ways you can actually do it. You can do a cost calculation and see what's actually the most productive, most cost-efficient way of actually doing it on site. <coughs> so there's no, actually, there's no hard and fast rule. It must be one and a half. Depends on the situation that you actually have. Yes, uh, and sir, would you, is there a protection rate for holding block uh, Yes. It's 40. No, 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 no. Uh, it's coming down a bit, 40. Okay. Around about, uh, uh, you can do 40 on, uh, on 90 and possibly 140 blocks. If you're going to uh, 190 blocks, it must come, come down slightly. The big issue is, on, if you, you've got, and we know, but if you've got an, an, a strong mason, the big problem with block laying, especially your 140s and definitely your 190 wide blocks, the problem comes when the mason laid the mortar, you must put his trowel down and use both hands to actually lift the block in place. And then you must pick up his trowel or his rubber mallet to actually knock the block in place. And then you must, 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 uh, must uh, apply some mortar on, the, on that butter, the next brick, the next block, and put his trowel down again. That's where your production very really often suffers when you're actually doing block work. But if you've got a nice strong mason with, with, with good hands, they can actually pick up a, 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 a 90 block with one hand. And that makes production considerably better. But on a 140, the guys battle, they get tired, and the 190 is impossible. So it's a roundabout figure there. That's what you're talking about. I agree, sir. I think in that U block becomes a hassle also for them. Right. When they uh, try to install a routine. Yeah, that, that, that U-blocks. But they, they, you know what's the biggest problem with building with block works? Is that if you're having a good block that's actually fairly waterproof, the, 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 your mortar actually forms a layer. And if you build mortar like three, four courses, your blocks actually start moving. And now you must keep on, on rotating your masons where they're actually building. Because otherwise, they, they actually build the wall perfectly plumb. But when you get in this afternoon, the, the wall actually walked. And it's because of the mortar, the water in the mortar comes up. And when it hits the block, the block is, because it's a good block, the block is not absorbing the mortar. And now your block is basically slipping on the layer of water on the, um, on the top of your mortar. And that's actually causing your wall to go out, to walk out. How do you avoid that, Nasa? Uh, you actually, Use your mortar as dry, as dry as possible, and at the same time, you actually you must uh, must rotate your mountains. They must build like three courses, move them, move them to an, an, uh, another area, go and build there, then to another area, and to another area, then you can, can come back to your first area. But it's it's time consuming. Every time you move, it's time consuming, and you actually actually uh, lose production. But that's about the only way to get around that. Right. Any more questions? No. Then I'm going to say goodbye. Stay safe. But I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm seeing you again in what time's our technology? 12 or 12.30? 12 12.30. 12 12 12 Did I see you just now again for technology? Last chance for questions? No questions. Go well. Stay safe. And I'm seeing you guys in 40 minutes time. I'm seeing you guys again for some technology. All right. Bye. I'll see you guys just now. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye.